Well, hello. I, it is an, another opportunity and another privilege to come before you and bring you the message today. And I know most of you are either at the hospital or confined in some instance. And I guess right now with this coronavirus and the pandemic that we're still in, um, most of us are confined at this time. So let's dive right back in. Let's dive right into the word. Um, if you would bow with me. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we do thank you. God, we bless and we honor you for this day, the day that you have made. Uh, we came to praise your name. We came to lift you up. We came to worship you. And even in the midst of that, we recognize that you can change our circumstances. You can turn things around uh, for our good and for your glory. And you can be with us in the midst of everything that we're going through. And for that, we do bless you. So we ask now, God, that you speak to us, you speak clearly, so that we hear and understand what it is that you are trying to say. It is in your precious son, Jesus' name, that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen? Well, amen. I'm going to jump right into the word today. I know we normally have a song or something, but because we've been in this pandemic and I'm not the songstress, I would love to sing for you. Uh, but in any event, um, it is what it is. So let's jump right and dive right in into the word. I am going to come today from Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, the 29th through the 31st verses is what I'm going to read into your hearing. And the Bible says, but from there, you will search for the Lord your God and you will find him when you seek him with all your heart and all your soul. When you are in distress and all things have happened to you, you will return to the Lord your God in later days and obey him. He will not leave you, destroy you, or forget the covenant with your fathers that he swore to them by oath because the Lord your God is a compassionate God. From there. The title of the message today is It's Time to Move. It's time to move. I know we have gotten so used to being in the midst of all of this pandemic and sitting back and staying home. Hopefully we have been um, paying attention to the requirements or the things that have been given that we haven't been able to go out and move like we normally do. Um, and this particular passage in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, is when Moses is giving his farewell speech, if you would, because he knows that he is going to die in the land. He's not going to be able to cross over the Jordan. Joshua is going to take the children of Israel there, moving to another level, going from provision to the land of promise. But Moses is not going to be able to go. Um, and we're not going to get into the different reasons why, but I wanted to bring this word to you today that it is time for you to move. And here's what the Bible is saying to us. It's saying you're going to go from there to someplace else that God has for you, that you don't need to be stuck where you are. You don't need to stay where you are, that there's more for you to do. And I am going to encourage you as the passage encourages you. He says, but from there this movement that we're going to do has to he's god is calling us to move with intentionality in other words there's a purpose behind it there's a purpose that god has in mind that there is more that you're going to do uh, some say increase your capacity or expand your capabilities or moving from uh, crossing a threshold but either way you need to go from there to somewhere else that God has planned. And there's a process in getting there. But let me say this, there's at least three things because I know I'm under a time constraint with you um, that I want to bring to your attention for you to then marinate on, if you would, for this week. You're going from there with intentionality. There's a place that you need to go. There was a time in the Bible when Jesus was with his disciples and he says, we're gonna go to the other side. Well, yeah, you had to go from one side to the other. And in the midst of it, they came into a storm. But God had already preordained for them to get to the other side. There was a process in between. And so that's what we're going to have to do. We're moving with intentionality. God has a place for you to get to. There's a desire for you to influence on the other side. There are people that you're going to meet. There are people that you're going to help, people that you're going to encourage, someone that you're going to bless. All of that is going to happen, but you've got to go from there. 
wherever your there is. So, one thing you need to, he says, search for God. But I'm going to call it research. Why? Because some words for search simply says that you're going to research, you're going to explore, you're going to inspect. You're searching for God with your heart and your soul. You're going to research who God is. Hmm. Let me put a pin right there because many of us think that we know God, but we don't know him based on his word. We don't know him based on our worship of him. We don't know him based on his wisdom. We have an idea of who God is that's in our mind, uh, a God that kind of looks like us, that thinks like us, that tells us what we want to hear. But I'm saying to you, and this passage is saying to you, because it's calling for obedience when you look at it from the very beginning of the fourth chapter, Moses said, Saying, research God search for him with your entire heart and soul look for the word look for worship look for wisdom in all of that and when he says with your heart when you search for him with all of your heart there's a love behind when we use the word heart we typically associate it with love I'm caring for you but it also evokes emotion as well as commitment and a faithfulness that comes with it. So I'm going to research God with the idea of my emotions are going to be entangled in this, that I'm going to have some commitment because he has a covenant relationship with me. He has commitment to me and I'm going to be faithful to what I hear, but also with my soul, my mind, my will, my thoughts. Now, the heart side of it is going to lead to worship. The soul side of it, the mind, the thoughts, the will is going to lead to praise. So when I research God and I really look at all of what he has, no matter where I am right now, I'm going to move from there to where he wants me to go. He says that I'm going to, he said, I will search for him. Let me read it again. It says, verse 30, when you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, you will return. So look, before I get to return, which is my second point, I'm going to research first. But I have to recognize that no matter where you are, even if you're in the hospital, sometimes we're in distress when we're at home um, and can't encapsulate it, if you would, in our own homes. Distress is there's some extreme anxiety, some sorrow or some pain. Extreme anxiety, sorrow and pain is distressful. But it begs the question, why am I in distress? And I can't answer the question why, but I know that there is a purpose in your distress. See, that's why I said we're going to move with intentionality. It's time to move. Move from distress. Don't allow it to continue to weigh you down. Don't be in a very anxious anyway. And again, because God says that we should be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make our requests known. And he will give us his peace. There's a promise on the other side. In my distress, he says that. I will be an ever-present help in a time of trouble, in a time of distress. You can call upon me and I will be there. So that distress is that area or that situation and circumstance of anxiety, sorrow, and pain. And it also says, and all these things have happened to you. Hmm. Whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, tell your story because somebody's going to benefit from your story. Somebody else is getting ready to go through what you've gone through. The heartache, the pain, the stress, the loss, whatever it was, whatever it is right now, trust the process, but recognize that that process has a purpose in mind to bless somebody else. I know we don't wanna think about that, but when we're forward thinking and we're not just stuck in our own, because see, we can, be here in this moment be depressed be anxious be downcast be stuck and god says no i want you to go from there mm -mm. wherever you are right now i need you to get to someplace else and you're going to take some people with you and you're going to bless some people on the way and you're going to be a mighty servant of mine when you do just that from there, mm. research God. Word, research his word, his wisdom, and his worship. Worship him. But then he says, when you 
have gone through all of this return then so I'm gonna research and then I'm gonna return in that return there's a call to obedience follow his commandments follow his statutes um, be in his word know what he says and do exactly what is there not only are you going it is at a call for obedience but it is also a call to pray because he says communicate with me you're searching with to, for him with your entire heart you're thirsting after him the deer pants after the water brook oh my soul thirsts after you oh god i need you i want you i desire you in my life because my life might be a little messed up right now it might seem that i'm my body is racking with pain right now but even in the midst of my pain i know you are good in the midst of the distress that i'm going through i know that you have a plan for me you said that eye has not seen you said that ear has not heard it hasn't even entered into the heart of man the things you have planned for me and God in the midst it doesn't look right it doesn't look like it's going to be prosperous but the promised land is already available you've already made provision for it and I need to walk in my abundance I need to expand my capacity I need to go from here to where you have me I need to walk across that threshold so I need to research God I need to return to God but the last thing is I need to remember if you recall the word says in verse 39 he will not leave you destroy you or forget the covenant that he made with you God is a compassionate God he is a promise keeper he is the one that is able to make wrong things right he is a just God he is a righteous judge and God knows what you're going through, but the good news is he's not going to leave you. Even in the midst of going through this progress and in the midst of this process, you trust the process, but you trust him more because he is not going to leave you in the process. He's standing right there with you. He covers you. He's on your right hand and on your left. He's behind and he's in front. He's all around you. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He says, no, not ever, no, not ever, no, not ever. But he also says, I will not destroy you. Even in the midst of the process where it looks like you're just flailing, that you're in the ocean and you're just flapping your arms and nothing seems to be going right, you're not going to be destroyed. Yes, God is a consuming fire, but those that are his, he knows and he promises that he is not going to destroy you. If you return to him, when we repent and we ask him, God, forgive me for what I've done. I know I, I don't need to stay here. I've looked in your word. I've researched your word. I praised and I honored you in all of what I'm doing. I've returned to you with my whole heart. I, I sought after you. I asked you to search me and know me. I asked you to clean up what was on the inside of me so that it is better and that I can help and bless somebody else I've told my story that no I'm not perfect yes I'm being authentic yes I have struggles yes I've gone through no I'm not sure what you've got planned for me but I know whatever it is it's a good plan and because of all of that God you're not gonna destroy me but you're not gonna forget the covenant either I can stand in your promises I continue to follow your way because you are the truth you are the light you are my salvation I don't need to fear anybody else because you've got a great plan you're a compassionate God you love me he loves you with an unexplainable unattainable type love it's unconditional it's not because you've done something right and he loves you it's even when you've done something wrong and you repent that he loves you because he wants the best for you and I know I'm getting a little long-winded and all of this but I wanted you to know and I had to come by and tell you that it's time to move don't get stuck where you are don't stay where you are trust the process but trust God more research him know what he's about know what his word says return to him be obedient to all that he says and then remember remember just how good he is God has a great plan for you and I just stopped by to let you know it's time it's time I know you got comfortable but it's time don't go back to slavery don't go back to what you used to do it's time it's time to move <sighs> let's bow God we thank you 
I thank you for each and every person who is listening to this message that you will prick their hearts for where you want to take them. I thank you for all of the saints that are in the hospital that are listening to this, God. Their bodies might be racking with pain and I'm asking that you alleviate some of that now. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father, I ask that you comfort them and you keep them. As you promised in your word that you would always be near, you would always be compassionate, you would always be loving. That you will never leave them in the state in which they are in, but you will move them from there to where you want to take them. God, enlarge their territory, expand their vision, let them see you in all of your glory, let them find you, Lord, and taste and see that you are truly good. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives and all that we're going to see because of it. On this Sunday, we continue to bless and to honor you. It's because of your word that we stand on and your promises that we keep. God, we thank you. We thank you for loving us. And I ask that you continue to bless us this day that you have made. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And I'm sitting outside today. I didn't tell you that earlier because God is so vast. And I'm going to try to turn around the camera so that you can see that there is a beautiful world out there. One that God wants you to have. No limits, but move toward it. And as you move toward it, you see fish jumping. As you move toward it, you'll be expanded to all of what God has for you. Be blessed today.